In this video, uh, we will uh, discuss two body Hamiltonians. Uh, we will see how to write two body Hamiltonians uh, uh, in an absolute frame of reference and also in the relative frame of reference. So the problem statement is like this. Suppose that uh, we have two particles in three-dimensional space, let's say some particle with mass m1 and another particle with mass m2. And if we take a coordinate system which is uh, centered uh, away from these particles, then we can specify, let's say, the position of one particle with a position vector r1 and the position of the other particle with the position vector r2. Then we can write their Hamiltonian as uh, the total kinetic energy and the total potential energy of these particles. So the kinetic energy of this particle can be written as P1 square over 2M1 for particle 1 and similarly P2 square and 2M2 where P1 is the momentum of particle 1 and P2 is the momentum of particle 2. So you can put a vector here or not, it doesn't matter because this is going to be magnitude anyway, plus their potential energy. So in general, the potential energy will depend on the position vector R1 and position vector R2 if we assume a general potential. However, instead of assuming a general potential, if uh, we, and this is a big if, which is by the way a very common case. If V is not independently function of R1 or R2, but it is function of the distance between the two particles, uh, we call this special type of potential as a central potential. So if we have potential profile uh, like this, then we can express this uh, Hamiltonian in uh, in a coordinate system where we can reduce the number of unknown variables. So if we have a central potential, we can write uh, the Hamiltonian like this. Okay, so uh, before I uh, go on and discuss uh, how to uh, transform this uh, Hamiltonian into uh, another frame of reference, let's briefly discuss uh, uh, these eigen, uh, these uh, momentum operators P1 and P2. Uh, by the way, uh, this uh, central potential is very ubiquitous. For example the central potential between two masses due to gravitational force or uh, let's say if uh, we have uh, these particles which are charged then we can write uh, the central potential uh, between these two particles from Coulomb's law like this which is a, a very common case uh, in quantum mechanics and especially when we solve the uh, Hardman atom. Okay, so let's discuss uh, the operators uh, P1 and P2. And before that, let's uh, see what kind of uh, Hilbert space we need uh, to solve a, a problem like this. So we need uh, a position space which has uh, the position of uh, both particles and sometime this position actually is written as uh, this position space is written as a tensile product of uh, the two independent uh, position space of uh, the two particles. So when we write it like this, it means when we have uh, an operator which is operating let's say only on particle one, then this only acts on this and does nothing to this. And similarly, if we have an operator which is operating uh, on the 
uh, on particle 2, then it operates only on this uh, cat and it does nothing to this cat. So we will be using the, uh, this notation and when we have operator, let's say the translation operator uh, which translates uh, by some constant factor the position of particle 1. So when this operates on this uh, position cat, this simply translates the position of particle 1 and does nothing to the position of particle 2. And if we have a, a translation operator, let's say operating on particle 2, then it translates the uh, position of particle 2 and it does nothing to the position of particle 1. And we can see by this very nature, if we want to construct uh, by very nature of these uh, translation operators, we can see that they both commute. That uh, if we apply this operator first or this, it doesn't matter because this operates uh, on R1 and this operates on R2, so the order won't matter, so they both commute. And also we can see that if we want to construct a translation operator which translates the position of both particles by some vector A, this is nothing but a uh, combination of uh, the translation operator of individual particles and since uh, they commute, we can as well write them in this form. And if we write them in terms of uh, the linear momentum, then this T1 is iota h cut, T1 dot A, iota h cut, T2 dot A. And since T1, T2 commute, this means that uh, their corresponding momentum operator So commute, which means that uh, since these P1, P2 commute, we can add these momentum together and define a new momentum capital P, which is the sum of individual. So we have the translation operator for both particles which translates both particles by some uh, vector A in terms of the uh, total linear momentum of uh, the particles uh, which is capital P which is the sum of the uh, two individual momentum. Okay, so we saw that to work with the Hamiltonian of two particles, we have to work with the, a position space, which is the tensor product of uh, the position space of two particles, uh, which is uh, quite complicated. So, uh, uh, however, if we have uh, uh, a potential profile, which we call central potential, and more often than not in physics, we are working with central potentials which have this special property that the potential is not function of uh, two positions independently but it's function of the distance between the two particles. And if this is the case that our potential is central potential then uh, we can simplify our Hamiltonian if we use uh, uh, another coordinate system. And let me explain that new coordinate system. Suppose uh, we have two particles M1, M2 with the positions R1, R2 and we introduce two new vectors. One vector is this R vector which is the position of M2 relative to M1. 
So this is a relative position vector. Uh, this uh, you can also say that this is a position vector of M2 with respect to a coordinate system which is centered at M1. Uh, and since we have uh, two position vectors here to transform, we need another position vector and that position vector conveniently is the position vector of the center of mass of these uh, two particles. The position vector of the center of mass can easily be found. It's just the uh, weighted uh, average of the coordinates R1 and R2. So M1 R1, M2 R2 over M, where this M is total mass of the two particles. Now this relative position vector R can be written in terms of R1 and R2 uh, like this. Since R1 plus R is equal to R2, R1 plus R is equal to R2, this gives us that R is equal to R2 minus R1. So this is our relative position vector. We have our Hamiltonian, and let me write it again. Our Hamiltonian was, in terms of R1 and R2, was defined as E1 square 2M1, E2 square 2M2, and potential like this. It's very easy to transform the potential because uh, uh, R1 minus R2, its magnitude is uh, needed. So the magnitude of R2 minus R1 and magnitude of R1 minus R2 the same, which is the magnitude of R. So this quickly transforms to simply V of R, R, you can write it V of R. All we need to do now is to work out the transformation of P1 and P2. And let me just uh, Remind you that P1 is nothing but M1 R1 and P2 vector is nothing but M2 R2 dot. So to find P1 and P2, we need to find the expression for R1 and R2. So we have uh, these two equations. So this is this one and this one. So we can solve these two equations simultaneously to get the expression for R1 and R2 in terms of R and RCM and then we can substitute them there. And if we do solve, we can easily get the expression for R1 and R2 where R1 comes out to be M2 R plus M RCM M plus M1 and R2 comes out to be minus M1 R1 plus this over M plus M2. Now if we substitute this R1 and R2 here and you put this P1, P2 here and rearrange, you can easily get this equation.
plus one half. And if we expand these two terms and then combine different terms, we can get this equation. U plus V of R, where this is the momentum. Let me just write the vector momentum with respect to this is the momentum of the center of mass, and if we Substitute the expression for RCM here. This M cancels M1 R1 and 2 R2, and this is nothing but P1 plus P2. So we have one term which only depends on the total linear momentum of the two particles, and this mass is also total. This this PCM is nothing but the total momentum of the system. So this term is only dependent on the total momentum of the system. Now this term, this P square, is actually nothing but uh, this, this P term, P vector is nothing but mu uh, r dot. And this mu is what we call reduced mass of particle 2 uh, because of uh, going to this uh, relative coordinate system. So you just uh, rearrange the terms of this equation. You collect the terms which have RCM and M on one side and all other terms in the other side. Then you get this equation where this PCM is the MR dot cm and this p is uh, a term that has r in it this mu is uh, the reduced mass in terms of m1 and 2 and total mass so this is our hamiltonian now it has one term uh, which is the which is dependent on the total linear momentum uh, this term which has the relative momentum of uh, particle 2 with respect to particle 1 with reduced mass mu and then there is this uh, central potential term. Now uh, we can you know interpret this in this way that the Hamiltonian uh, is giving is separating us the total energy like this that we have uh, kinetic energy of the uh, total kinetic energy or kinetic energy of the center of mass plus we have kinetic energy of uh, individual parts within the two particle system and then we have differential energy of the two particles. Now uh, in most of uh, two particle problems we are really interested in this term which gives us the relative motion or relative properties of the two particles and not the uh, total uh, energy are the uh, total momentum of the two particle system because that total behaves nothing uh, extraordinarily but just like uh, the uh, just like the kinetic energy of a single particle with that total mass m because you can see from this that uh, this Hamiltonian can be broken into two parts so there is this part which only depends on the total mass and on the position of the center of mass. It doesn't depend on this potential at all. So this part is just like the Hamiltonian of free particle, whereas this part depends on the form of the potential and on the relative momentum uh, of the particles. So uh, to see its importance, let's say 
we break our Hamiltonian into two parts. Let's say we have uh, Hamiltonian CM and Hamiltonian relative where the center of mass Hamiltonian is simply this and the relative Hamiltonian is this. Now, if we have, uh, and as uh, you can see that this is only a function of RCM and this is a function of R. And if we have, let's say, our uh, wave function and we have transformed it to a new coordinate system with the small r and rcm, we see that this eigenvalue equation can easily be broken into two parts. If we imagine this psi to be as product of two signs where one is function of RCM and the other is function of R. So if we substitute this here and uh, substitute for H, we can see that, uh, let me see if uh, we can Okay, so let me rub this part. So, if we have our Hamiltonian, which only depend on RCM, and we have our Hamiltonian, which only depends on R, Operating on psi 1 of R, psi 2 of RCM, E, psi 1 of R, psi 2 of RCM. So let's distribute it here. So HCM psi 1, psi 2. H relative psi 1, psi 2, E psi 1, psi 2. Now, psi 2 can come out of this. Because this only operates on RCM, which is uh, inside psi 1. Similarly, psi 1 can come out of here. Into psi 1. Let's now divide through out by psi 1, psi 2, then we get HCM psi 1 over psi 1, H relative psi 2 over psi 2 is equal to E. So this is a term which is function of RCM only, and this is a term which is function of R only, and they are two adding up to give us this constant number E. So there is only one possibility and that is both of them are constant. Because if this is function of RCM, it's not going to be cancelled by anything from here. Similarly, if this is a function of R, small r, this is not going to be cancelled by any term from here. So the only possibility is that this is constant and this is constant. So let's call those constant, uh, let's say this is some constant ECM. And this is some constant the relative. And since this is energy, these two constants are also energies. And by this identification, I can write uh, this is not going to be a good contrast because there's a shade of red color here. So let's use yellow chalk. So this is equal to this, which means that. HCM 
psi 1 is equal to ECM psi 1 and this is equal to this which means that H relative psi 2 is equal to E relative psi 2. Now this equation can be solved quickly. So these two equations are now two independent equations where this is just like a free particle equation because there is no potential inside HCN and this is the equation that is actually more interesting because uh, it has a form like this e square 2 mu plus v of r psi relative this E relative S. and its solution depends on this potential V of R. The other equation is simply this psi, this was psi 1, so this only depends on RCL. M psi y rc. This equation has solutions of this type plus minus iota kc and uh, rc m because this is just like uh, a free particle equation uh, where this kc m uh, is uh, has a magnitude two m. ECM square root over H cut and its direction is the direction of propagation of the particle. So the total wave function psi is something like this that it's psi 1. Psi 1 is K C M dot R C M into psi 2, which is just a function of R. So, even though the total wave function is like this, where this is uh, uh, due to the overall uh, possible linear uh, motion of the particle, uh, of the two particle system, whereas this function describes the internal motion of the two particles. And since uh, uh, this at best only contributes uh, a constant term to the total energy E because E is just the sum of E relative and ECM and in most uh, cases we are only interested in the uh, energy difference between uh, different levels so this part cancels out anyway so that's why most of the time we are only interested in this wave function which is just the solution of this relative equation uh, of the two particle system where only coordinate of interest is the relative position of particle 2 with respect to particle 1 and instead of the mass of particle 1 or particle 2 we use the reduced mass of the two particle system thank you